What's going on guys, Big VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna switch things up. I'm gonna show you guys and tell you guys why I dubbed this the ultimate handheld. So what I did there? Switch. <laughs> I figured I'd give you guys a quick update again. I'm working on the CNC. A lot of people see my Instagram stories. Again, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP. You'll see a lot of stories, especially what we're gonna be talking about today because I kind of made stories about this about a week ago before this goes out. And this one's gonna be interesting, but just wanna give you guys an update real quick on the CNC machine. I've gotten a couple of DMs about this. So I'll make a whole nother episode about that. That's more about CNC machines and all that. But so far with it, we got a pinball machine in the works. We got a customer, George actually, making a 50 inch pinball machine for him. So again, a lot of work as always, working from home, luckily with the CNC in the garage. So big thing is that I'm gonna go down to my battle station. And uh, again, as you guys know, I do, ceiling low. As you guys know, I do make arcade builds and all that, but I'm also a gamer. You have to remember that, uh, you know, born 1990, my first system was an NES. So gaming is a passion it's basically my life and um i'm gonna basically kind of give you an idea of how this even came about and how i basically even started this thing so i've been doing a lot of research before i made this video um i kind of have to be careful with what i say in the video i won't be able to give, give you too much detail um i'm not going to drop the company name i'm pretty sure you guys could know that um, but again, you know, I see like Linus Tech Tips talk about this and what I did to it and um, You know, I'd rather just be on the safe side. So basically, I'm gonna show you guys this handheld uh, Long story short, I've always had this handheld ever since Odyssey came out and I beat Odyssey great game amazing game, but it's been in my drawer for like I don't know two years literally like collecting dust so let me put the camera down, I'm gonna just kinda of get comfortable and I'll explain to you how I even came up and started this whole modification to this console. All right, so I don't wanna to be too sporadic with this video. I kinda of definitely wanna you know, keep track of things, mostly kind of explaining why I would dub this as the ultimate handheld out. I've been doing a lot of research, but let me tell you how basically I started and basically came up and researched, I should say. I didn't come up with anything. You do your research and you could figure out what I did to mine. Um, so long story short about I would say three weeks ago. I had a business trip to go to Chicago It was supposed to be like a five-hour thing. I literally was supposed to fly out meet some people Fly back home to New York, right? So it's supposed to be a one-day thing and my luck and even my wife was like you should have packed uh, I went like this just literally with cell phone in hand and nothing else in my pocket uh, went to Chicago and sure enough, about an hour before my departure flight coming back to New York was supposed to happen, I get a text, flight canceled. Basically, I had to wait till the next day to come back home, so it was kind of brutal. And the only big thing is basically what, I, what I'm trying to get at is that I was in the airport waiting, and I'm just like on my phone, and like after like, you know, 30 minutes of like looking at like, you know, Instagram and checking out the emails and all that, you get kind of bored, and I'm like, damn, I wish I had like, a console, I wish I could play my games like I would actually have time to play my games. I usually build the arcades and I let other people, you know, enjoy their arcades and I'm like, damn, you know, I would love to play like Mario World, Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. Um, you know, a lot of games like the Sega Genesis, I was a big fan of Beavis and Butthead. You know, I, I wanted to play it, I was like, I was like, I wish I had something in my hand. And sure enough, the departure flight got delayed and I just wound up in the hotel literally just looking at videos of like handhelds. They make some great affordable handhelds, like cheap ones, like 50, 60 bucks that look like Game Boys. Uh, a couple of the newer style ones almost look like PSPs. But obviously these are like China bootlegs, we would call them. They're not real kind of systems, but they do get the job done. Then I dabbled into like extreme handhelds. Like um, there's a company, something called an Odin. Somebody messaged me about a Stream Deck. One that I was going to buy on eBay used, but it was like crazy priced was a 1X player that had like an i7 in it. It was just mind boggling to me because I was like, I was like, it's just crazy how you could put all this technology in a handheld. Um, I was looking at the 1X, I'm looking at the Odin now, but they are very expensive. It would work out with emulation with what I do, um, but I'm gonna have, I mean, the price tag on it, it's just a little bit too much. I mean, you're talking about 14, 
for the one X player. And I'm like, that's too much. Then I discovered a YouTube channel and I'm going to just say the name of it. The guy's name is you definitely a cool guy. He's known to have the fastest, like he's the fastest explainer on how to get this system running. So you from better gaming, shout out to you because without your kind of videos and your tutorials, I wouldn't know what to do. But basically I discovered that you could take this and add games to it and kind of go all out with it. And I was like, whoa, I have this in my drawer collecting dust. As you can see like my battle station, I have, the, I have it deck, like docked. It's been like that like for years, just there collecting dust. I didn't have it plugged in. Once I got home from Chicago, I plugged it in and then I started watching the videos and I'm like, oh my God, this thing is the best thing ever, 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 ever. So I can't go into details exactly what I did. Just know that there are only certain models that will be doable for this. Um, and that's basically the backstory on handheld. Now, ever since I did this about two weeks ago, every night, like usually I'm on like my PC, I'll play the Counter-Strike. Every night now, I've been on this. And it's great, it's awesome, it's cool. It's definitely an experience. You could shoot me a DM on Instagram and I'll explain everything. I did make a promo video, just kind of showing it off and people are like, whoa, what's happening? But I will go into detail and tell you why I dubbed this the ultimate handheld. Now again, there are other handhelds on the market. I personally, there's two main reasons why I would dub this the ultimate handheld. Um, but let me bring you guys closer. First, let's take a look at the handheld itself. And then I'll tell you why, you know, why I believe it's the best one out. Now, before I even like dive in, show you everything, before you even go check out Yu's channel, there is a lot to understand. I'm not gonna really sit here and explain it. Just know that, yes, I understand that it is frowned upon. I get it, I understand it. You gotta do what you wanna do, it's your life. You gotta, you do what you want, all right? I, I understand, trust me, I get it, I understand. But this thing's been sitting in the drawer for three years and now I've been playing it all day. All right, so like I said, I'll show you some basics. Again, be, be careful, do your research on exactly what this thing does. Just basically keep in mind, basically, you can't use this online anymore. I did do the two things that you could basically keep your account and play your actual games online. Me personally, I have no plans to play online, not to mention what this company did for their yearly fee and what you get. It's a hard pass. I only play my PC stuff online anyway. So there's basically a couple of main things. Uh, I have this app, which basically is the store of the system at your fingertips with a couple of companies and all that, basically on servers. So I'm purposely blogging out the server name so nothing gets in trouble and all that. Again, people, somebody messages like, Vic, you shouldn't show the app. I understand that, but again, the main thing is the company, the server, the FTP server. So now with that in this store, you do have a lot. There is a lot I could even skip like this if I want. I could list it by name. I could list it by release date. There is a lot at your fingertips. You basically pick one, it goes to your SD card, and then from there you are basically set to play. Um, on mine, personally, I did run a 512 gigabyte SD card. For everything I'm gonna show you, it fits, and as you can see, I do have remaining 325 gigs left. That's one app. The other two is pretty cool, which is honestly the main reason why I ran this. The other two are the main reason why I really did this. Uh, if I hold down a specific button combo, which is really holding down R1 and launching a game, I do have PSP and I do have RetroArch on this. RetroArch, RetroArch, I call it RetroArch. I'm gonna launch RetroArch and I'll show you guys exactly what I did with RetroArch because I'm mostly on this, honestly. I play this every night, like I said, I play this mostly. So. Just like how arcades are and Raspberry Pis, you do have RetroArch. So I'm gonna first let this kind of load. Once I get here, it kind of takes a second to load up. And as you can see, now I'm loaded. So this basically, I took my Raspberry Pi image and put it here, but I only put in the main systems that I personally will be playing and I personally know. So for example, you could see here the system name and how many games. So I have Atari 2600, the 5200, the 78. I have three folders for arcade. You can see how many, there's almost 2,000 arcade games. We got the advanced, the color, regular, 
64, NES, SNES, and then I have Sega. So 32X Game Gear, Master System, Mega Drive. These are like the main systems that I personally would play. And honestly, they play great. N64 is iffy, just like the Raspberry Pi. I did try to run GoldenEye on this and it ran choppy. You might be able to do something to settings, but I didn't bother. I basically honestly play most of the Game Boy stuff and the Super Nintendo stuff. And like I said, I was a big fan of Beavis and Butthead. So I could just come here, I could use my letter skips and I could just go to BE and I could load up some classic Beavis and Butthead. Again, it's so cool. It's, it's just awesome to have this at my fingertips while on an airplane and all that. It's, it's just, it's great. It's awesome. I have a little bit of a button combo. I could exit out. I could save state, load state, just like how you would with RetroArch. Um, that's the main thing. I'm going to come back to this at the end of the video because this right here and the specific controller layout is why I would dub this the ultimate console. Before we jump to that though, we're going to go exit and we are actually going to launch PSP. Now PSP in all honesty, I have a lot of PSP games on my PC drives. Obviously I just wanted to play Grand Theft Auto. That was the main thing. I kind of just took a handful of PSPs and just threw it into my, my SD card. Um, basically just like on my Raspberry Pi builds, I have two folders. I have a PSP mini folder, which these all work. These are like mini game style that this was big. All these games worked. I would say there's about a thousand games of the PSP minis. But if I go back, I can go to my main folder, which is PSP. Again, I didn't test all these. God of War was iffy. Um, that was stuttering. So it's not perfect. Let me lower this. Wasn't perfect gameplay, but the main thing that I wanted to play was Grand Theft Auto. So the Grand Theft Auto's work and they work great. This basically is mimicking an actual PSP. So this is enter. Whereas on this console, enter is this one here. This is back. Just remember again, this is PSP and you got to think of it as a PSP. So this is X circle triangle square. Kind of just let that music kind of go so I don't get hit with anything. And again, I've been playing this. I could load my state, but I'm just doing this for video purposes. And just to kind of show you the performance on this with PSP. I mean, this right here is, is awesome. This is what I wanted to do. This honestly, I always like see this on my drives, like when I when I make the PC drives. And oh Lord in heaven. <laughs> I always have these on my drives. And I, I never I never play this. I'm big on Grand Theft Auto. You want to talk about Grand Theft Auto? I'm huge on it. I love Grand Theft Auto, but I've never played like this version. So I would love to play it. And at least now I'm able to actually play it. You hit L3, it brings up the menu. You could exit to the main menu and you could pick a different game. So we got RetroArch and we got PSP on this. And again, the biggest thing is this eShop because this eShop and this console is currently making games still. So basically, yes, you do have it at your fingertips. So that's one thing that I would declare this as the ultimate console because this app, this this app, it, it, it gets you these games and they are still making these games. So it's definitely an awesome, awesome feeling. The last thing I'm gonna mention is I'm gonna go back into RetroArch and just show you something that I think is just amazing. After you really play with RetroArch, um, and I'll make a video on it for the controller configuration. But basically, you know, big thing on RetroArch is to play arcade games. I like arcade games. Why not? So I'm actually just going to go to make my life easy. I'm going to go to history and I'm going to launch Marvel versus Capcom. And this is honestly, this is why I would declare this the ultimate console. Just picture this, right? You're on an airplane. You're even at maybe family's house. And you know, you're playing it, you got this thing in your hands, all of a sudden your cousin, your brother, they see you playing some Marvel vs. Capcom, they do some shit talking, they go, I could whoop your ass on it. Right now with the Joy-Cons connected, you do have access, as you can see my buttons here are activating the, the, the players and all that. I'm gonna just let this kind of go real quick, just kind of show you off. So again, six button arcade game, so you got four buttons here and I have L1 and R1 set. And as you can see, I'm able to control and move my character here, right? 
Here's the best part. This is why I'm declaring it the ultimate handheld. If I ever move the Joy-Cons, right? And with my RetroArch setting, if I hit this, I now have two player RetroArch gaming, not to mention your regular Switch two player gaming at your fingertips. This is honestly the best feature of it. I didn't go into settings. I didn't do anything at all within RetroArch. Just simply removing the Joy-Cons, I have six buttons right here. So you got the two up top here, six buttons, arcade gaming, anything. You wanna play Super Nintendo, you wanna play Sega Genesis, RetroArch, again, my, my personal RetroArch file is 9,000 games. This right here is just mind boggling to me. And again, you do have L1 and R1. One big thing for RetroArch on my setup, and I'll make a video for it, I basically have start and select as a one button thing. So with that, if you play a Super Nintendo game, you might have to go into the button configurations and remove select. That's the only thing I did notice that there's a couple of handful of games that need start to start the game. But because I have start and select map to one button press, it's kind of an issue, it's kind of iffy. So. Again, just keep that in mind. I'll make a video on the RetroArch button combo. But this right here is just, it's just, it's just awesome. And again, the cool thing is I could use my one player, as you could see, that was my button combo, which is start and select here, L1 and R1. And I am able to close and I could pick another game. I'm actually gonna bring back Marvel vs. Capcom just to end the video. Um, but basically what I'm getting at is that while I was playing that game, if I connect the Joy-Cons, it brings it back to one player. And again, what amazes me is that I didn't have to go into RetroArch. I didn't have to change settings. It automatically did it. So player one, player two, I'm gonna launch this. We're gonna actually get into a game. Just to show you guys the player one, player two, two, one player. It's, it just, it boggles my mind and this is why I'm dubbing it again, the ultimate handheld. So as you can see, player one, player two is I'm moving around, I'm using this. But once I dock this, one and two, player two is no longer active. And now I am back to six button, one player action. Obviously you would have to, you know, finish this round or close the game to go back to one player. But the biggest thing again is just to show you guys why I'm naming it the ultimate console is it's so simple to go from player one to player two. And again, imagine being on an airplane and your partner next to you wants, you know, hey, I'm gonna kick your ass in some, you know, Street Fighter, if only this could play two player. And you literally got two players at your fingertips. Again, I am declaring it the ultimate console. I, I this, is, this is just gonna come with me. This is gonna travel with me all the time. Now the last thing I do want to mention about this, because this is a must. It is a must. A lot of people, like I said, I did post this a lot on Instagram and people are going nuts. This right here is called and considered a tethered jailbreak. You want to go layman terms. Basically, you do not want to turn this off. Whatever you do, do not turn this system off. If you do turn it off, you need to connect it to a PC to bring it back to life. You could put it to sleep. I always have it in the charger docked. You could put it to sleep, but if the battery dies or if you power it off or remove the SD card, you need a, P a PC to bring it back to life. That is the only downside to it. Now just real quick to let you know, I'm cutting in right now because I just remembered it. Um, but some of you might be saying, no Vic, you don't need a PC to bring it back to life if you turn it off. They do sell a loader. It's a little block that you could get honestly on Amazon. Um, I haven't tested that route. Um, it's just me personally, it's something satisfying about connecting the device to a PC and then hearing the Windows chime like connected. Again, I haven't done this loader thing, so I don't know exactly how it works, but for me personally, and I'm telling everybody, connect it to the PC. But yes, you could essentially use the loader as well. That is the only downside to it. But for me, I kind of future-proofed it in a way I can't really, I mean, I'll explain it because I'm gonna make tutorials anyway. But basically, I have my launch program on my SD card. So if I do get stuck and I'm at somebody's house, I'm just gonna put the SD card in a computer and launch the program and I am back to gaming. 
again, I, I, it's, it's just mind boggling. It's, I've had this sitting in a drawer and I was like, I just, I just want to play some old school like Sonic. I want to play some Super Mario World and I could do it now. Things, I, again, I think, it's, I think it's the most craziest thing in the world. VigVP, Game Case Arcade. Again, because of this two player swap right here where I can actually play two players with this, I'm dubbing it. It is the ultimate handheld.